Let's stand. Mass is being celebrated for the happy repose of the soul of Phyllis Slayton. The law of truth was in his mouth. No dishonesty was found in his lips. He walked with me in integrity and peace and turned many away from evil. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins. And so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask blessed and greatly and for religion, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, call the bishops Saint Irenaeus to confirm true doctrine and the peace of the church. Grant we pray through his intercession that being renewed in faith and charity, we may always be intent on fostering unity and concord. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram. I am your shield. I will make your reward very great. But Abram said, O oh Lord God, what good will your gifts be if I keep on being childless and have as my heir the steward of my house, Eliezer? Abram, Abram continued, See, you have given me no offspring, and so no one of my servants will be my heir. Then the Lord and the word of the Lord came to him, No, that one shall not be your heir. Your own, shall, your own issue shall be your heir. He, he took himself outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who has credited it to him as an act of righteousness. He then said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land as a possession. O oh Lord God, he asked, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He answered him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old goat, she-goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought him all these, split them in two, and placed each half opposite the other. But the birds he did not cut up. Birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram stayed with them. As the sun was about to set, a trance fell upon Abram, and a deep, terrifying darkness enveloped him. When the sun had set and it was dark, there appeared a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch, which passed between those pieces. It was on that occasion that the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I will give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the great river of the Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Glory is in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. 
you descendants of Abraham, his servants, son of Jacob, his chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. The Lord, the Lord remembers his covenant forever. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham, and by his oath to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. According to Matthew, Glory Glory to the Lord. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but underneath are ravenous wolves. By their fruits you will know them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Just so every good tree bears good fruit, and a rotten tree bears bad fruit. The good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a rotten tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. So by their fruits you will know them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Beware of the false prophets that come to you in sheep's clothing, but underneath are ravenous wolves. By their fruits you will know them. These are solid truths. And these are good images that Jesus has used. By their fruits you will know them. Every good tree bears good fruit. You know, it's the statement, not just of agricultural wisdom, and we know that. I mean, Jesus used that. You know, uh, the image that Jesus used is quite striking because he's, you know, just not discerning trees themselves, but actually what a tree produces. So he's not discerning what we are as people, but what do we do with what we have? We're talking about the kind of fruits that they bear. Is it good or is it rotten? You know, does a and then, but also, what type of fruit? You know, if it's a lemon tree, is it producing lemons? Or would you expect it to produce something else? Think about that one for a while. Of course, underneath, Jesus is not talking about edible parts of vegetable growth or, effect, or fruit growth, but he's talking about the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. How open are we to the fruits of the Holy Spirit? And the fruits of the Holy Spirit are love, Joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You know, we are to discern not so much the internal disposition of another, but the quality of their deeds. How much by the fruits do they know? And we have to be able to recognize this in our life. We also have to need to recognize those false beliefs. <coughs> who come to you in sheep's clothing, but are also ravenous wolves that try to alter the way that we see things. It's a good example to today's saint of exactly following that. Saint Irenaeus. Saint Irenaeus was born you know, probably around the year 120 or something like that. He was born in Smyrna in Turkey, Christian parents during that time. He was sent to study under St. Polycarp. And St. Polycarp was a disciple of St. John. So you're talking about being as close as you can to following Christ, because obviously St. John, the beloved disciple, you know, Polycarp studied under St. John, and now St. Irenaeus studied under him. He influenced him so much. There's, it, it was, it, 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 he, he said, he, he, he said things that he testified. He cherished St. Polycarp's words, not just on paper, but in my heart. And then he went on to say something else. He said, for these things we learned in our childhood are parts of our souls. 
And I think about that as so profound, especially the way that we raise and influence our children today. How they are introduced to things at such a young age become parts of their souls as well, too. Okay. The Asian priests, okay, from Turkey and that went on to areas in Gaul, that area, which was East France, the local church there, and St. Polycarp, St. Irena Irenaeus out there. And it was there that he was ordained as a priest. And he stayed there for a while, and then he was sent on a mission to Rome shortly after the bishop there was martyred for his faith. By the time he returned to Lyon, the area in France, present Lyon, where the area in France that he was, those persecutions had come to an end, but the heresies were running rampant now. And this was the heresy of Gnosticism. Gnosticism was the heresy that said Jesus was a Gnostic teacher himself, that he whose real hidden precepts were just revealed to a few people, but not to many. He was just here for a few. And at the heart of Gnosticism, it denied doctrines of Christianity, such as the Incarnation, the Trinity, and creation by God. So, Irenaeus was prompted to spread, uh, to, to be able to spread the truth. And in order to do that, he researched and he studied all of the uh, things that Gnosticism were speaking about. He took the task of exposing all of the errors of this particular heresies. And so he went and he looked at these absurd notions that their philosophers were coming with in order to be able to bring these errors to true light. And that's exactly what he had done. You know, he ended up writing a book, actually it's five books, it's a, com it's a compilation book, and it's called Against All Heresies. It's one of the greatest apolo first apologetic book in the church that was written. It, 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 it's, it, it is incredible. It is really considered the first Catholic theological work then too. And not only did it do the job of being able to prevail all of the errors of Gnosticism on their back, okay, but also issued so much of the truths of the faith. The truths of our faith that the faith was passed down through the line of the apostles. Gnosticism could not claim this kind of authority. And that uh, the, original, the, the apostles were the original witnesses to the resurrection. And that Catholic doctrine is for all people. Jesus came for all people. And he was able to do, against all heresies, to be able to do real important things like being able to show uh, the way that the, the Christian Bible needs to be laid out. You know, when we talk about the Bible, at that time, they were speaking about just following Christ, but he saw about the importance of the Old Testament and the New Testament. Because in order to be able to refute these heresies, you have to know the reason why Jesus came to begin with. And that's where the Old Testament showers so much for us, the beginning of, of, of uh, salvation history. He argues that through Adam's disobedience, the development of the human race went wrong. And that's, of course, a wrongness that could neither be halted or reversed by anyone of merely human means. And so Jesus, the whole course of human evolution, was perfectly carried out and realized in obedience to the purpose of God. And so Irenaeus is the first to regard Jesus as the new Adam and Mary as the new Eve. And we recognize his greatness in his work, and, and Irenaeus then too, during this time, were wearing red for a reason, because he too gave his life for its first name. It's incredible when we think about this and we go back to the truths of our faith. But we need to be able to, you know, check that out. We, may, we need to be able to go back to the sources of the truth. 
you know. Uh, vacation Bible school, they're learning, you know, Jesus, shine your light on us. Okay, that's what they're learning, <laughs> to shine that light. No matter how much darkness there can be in the world, Jesus, shine that light. Let us see the truth in the midst of all of these, all of these ravenous wolves dressed as sheep out there that are so much trying to destroy us by being able to lure us in so many different ways. Let's pray today, especially as we receive the Eucharist, which is Jesus coming to us to continue to transform our lives so that we may discern well the good trees and the good fruits that we see, and also to check ourselves out that we are producing as well. We turn now to God, who is the source of all grace, and present our prayers. For church leaders, may the Holy Spirit nourish and sustain them, that they may continue to bear good fruit for the kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may God empower them, as they work to defend the dignity of life from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those with chronic illness, May the Holy Spirit stay close and comfort them in their time of suffering. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are gathered in this holy place, may the Lord, who is our strength, help us always remain in Him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died. Remember especially the intention of today's Mass, Phyllis Slaky. May they rest in the peace and the fullness of God's grace and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own personal intentions, which we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, who sent your Son to bring us new life, hear the prayers that we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, we have come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for spiritual drink. Blessed are you, Lord God. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. May the sacrifice we offer you with joy on this heavenly birthday of St. Irenaeus bring you glory, O Lord, and instill in us a love of the truth, so that we may keep the Church's faith inviolate and her unity secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr Irenaeus, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord of our hosts, and when the earth are full of your glory, most sign in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, most sign in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these sisters, by sending down your spirit upon them when you do fall, 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us for you to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Alfred, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Irenaeus, Saint Elizabeth of Hungary, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O oh God Almighty Father. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. By the Savior's command, performed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have done my word, but I will say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
for those who are unable to be with us today or unable to receive the Eucharist at this time, I'll now pray a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament, and I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me and I in him bears fruit in plenty. Pray. Through these sacred mysteries, we pray, O Lord, give us in your compassion an increase of that faith which brought glory to the Bishop St. Irenaeus as he, as he maintained it even until death, and may the same faith bring to us who truly followed him justification in your sight through Christ's story. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. And let God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke you and humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all evil spirits 